Hey, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to dual boot both Windows and Linux. And so I'm going to be using Windows, specifically Windows 10, uh, for this setup. And all you need to do is insert or uh, get a blank USB drive. And you can use Rufus or some other, uh, you can use DD, uh, some other um, ISO to USB or just burn the ISO to a CD-ROM or DVD specific uh, nowadays. Um, and uh, you can put it into your computer. Uh, so you need to turn off your computer in a way that uh, Windows 10 doesn't lock the drive because right now, if I tell my computer to shut down or restart, Windows does this pseudo shutdown kind of thing where it does kind of like a, a hybrid kind of shutdown. I can't remember exactly what it does, but it kind of locks the drive. It makes it difficult for you to modify the drive um, uh, outside of Windows. So you can do a Windows uh, R and open up the run dialog and you can do a shutdown minus R minus T zero and that will restart the machine uh, and not do the hybrid shutdown um, thing that Windows 10 does. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I read about it when uh, when I first looked at Windows 10. And so, yeah, this part's gonna be a little difficult. Getting your computer to go to the boot menu um, really depends on the manufacturer and uh, motherboard that you have. Like on a Dell machine, it'll be F12. On my Asus laptop, uh, I can press escape and that will take me into the BIOS menu and then from there I can go into the save and exit portion of the BIOS and click uh, well press enter on the uh, device that I want to boot and so uh, I put this onto a CD-ROM uh, if you had it on a DVD uh, on a uh, USB you could probably go up to either external internal uh, USB drive or removable devices but I'm going to go to CD-ROM, press enter, and that'll boot up the Ubuntu 1510 installation, the uh, live environment. And I'm running this on a virtual machine, specifically using a VMware uh, workstation. And it works better in VirtualBox because uh, Linux distros nowadays have the drivers for the uh, VirtualBox um, built into the distro, even for the live environment. And so it'll look a lot better than this will. Uh, if I used a virtual box, it would look better, but this is also running on a VM uh, virtual machine. So it's not gonna be as fast as running it on a physical machine. Now that we are inside of the live environment, um, if you are connecting via Wi-Fi, uh, you can do so. You can connect to the network that you want uh, right here. Uh, if it doesn't show your wireless access points right away, it's either still loading up the wireless interface, drivers, etc., and uh, searching for wireless networks. Um, it really also depends on the media that you're using. If it's a slower media, then it will take a little bit longer for the wireless networks to display. Um, I don't have a wireless network uh, card inside of this machine. I'm using ethernet. And if you are connected via ethernet, then you don't need to worry about this. Uh, but I would just wanted to bring it up because it would come in use a little bit later on in the setup. Uh, you can either try out the Ubuntu desktop if you want, and this will take you into the Ubuntu desktop using you know, the Unity desktop. And you can try it out before you install it. Once you're done, you can click on the install Ubuntu icon that's either on the desktop, or you can press the Windows key or super key, uh, whatever you want to call it, and it'll bring up the dashboard. You can type in install um, and install, finish uh, installing Ubuntu on the machine. You can pick the language that you want over here, and we're going to click install. And this is where the internet connectivity came 
comes into uh, a, is re the reason why I brought up the wireless connectivity. Uh, you can download and install updates while you are installing the Ubuntu uh, operating system distro. Um, and down here, this is for third party installations for like MP3, Java, etc. Any third party um, uh, plugins, software that you would need or want, like Flash. Uh, that would be installed if you click this uh, checkbox checkbox right here. You don't have to do it right now. As a matter of fact, I typically don't do it because it installs uh, MP3 support and Java and Flash and some other things that I don't really want. I would prefer to go out and install those things by myself. And you can go out later on after the installation and do that. But if you are new to Linux, uh, you might want to just install the third-party software to make it as close to a Windows or Mac-like um, experience as possible. And you can click continue from here. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to install the updates. I'm just showing you how to dual boot. So at this point, you can install Ubuntu alongside of Windows 10, or if you're running Windows 7, it'll say Windows 7 or any other uh, operating system. Uh, or you can install, uh, you can erase the disk and install Ubuntu yourself uh, without uh, dual booting, uh, or you can do something else and you can manually do it yourself. Uh, but this is going to be dual booting, so I'm just gonna keep install Ubuntu alongside Windows 10. I'm going to say install now, which isn't really going to do it right now, but this is just giving you the partition layout for the what it's going to do. You're going to need a swap. You don't really need a swap, depending on how much RAM you have. And X4 is the default file system that uh, Ubuntu 15.10 is using. Um, and this, these are just the partitions that it's going to set up for you on SDA. We're going to say continue. You can select the time zone that you're in. You say Detroit and continue. Uh, the keyboard layout and continue. You can type in the name that you want. If you came to a screen where it asked if you want to resize the partition, um, it's just a little slider that you move the uh, the uh, space uh, for Ubuntu or Windows that you want around and you can just select how much space you want each operating system to have. Uh, really not that hard. I didn't get the screen um, only because I probably already did this part and it probably already saw the partitions that I had uh, sized. But I'm going to say continue and it's going to install the operating system.
if you want to see exactly what the operating system is, well, what the installation is doing, you can click on this arrow right here next to the text. That'll expand the box out and show you the what's going on in the terminal. My screen isn't big enough because I don't have the drivers for the VMware workstation installed in the live distro. But if you're running this on a physical machine, it should be big enough for you to see exactly what it's doing. All right, now that the installation is complete, we can click on Restart Now to restart the computer. So when you boot up your machine, you will now have the Grub2 boot menu. You can boot into Ubuntu or you can boot into Windows 10. Um, in a later video, I can show you how to reorganize your boot menu. Um, but for now, we're going to boot into Ubuntu. Make sure that works. All right, now that we're at the uh, login screen, you can go ahead and log in with the password that you set up during the installation. So your display more than likely won't look like this only because I'm running this on a virtual machine and I'm using VMware Workstation, as I said before, so it doesn't have the display drivers for uh, VMware Workstation. I could install the add-ons, the installation uh, media for VMware Workstation drivers into Ubuntu, but I'll do that later. Uh, I just want to reboot and make sure I can access Windows as well. We're going to go down to Windows 10.
And there we go. We now have Windows um, dual booting with Ubuntu Linux. Um, in another video, I'll show you how to do this with Fedora and Debian, maybe some other Linux distros. I'll also show you how to remove the dual boot if you no longer want it and to restore the Windows um, the Windows boot menu, uh, the BCD store. Uh, but I hope you learned something in this video and thanks for watching.